All right, guys, let's talk about some knives that want to live in your pocket. Now, what I mean by this is some super EDC friendly blades. Now, most pocket knives that are designed to be pocket knives, generally speaking, are pretty pocket friendly. But undoubtedly, when you look at something like this Manticore X or, you know, you try to compare it against something like this, say, Spider Coast Smock, like you can see, obviously, this Manticore X is bigger, it's taller, it's wider. It's in basically all dimensions, a larger knife. And therefore, you know, you can't necessarily throw this in a pair of sweatpants. It's not going to be as easy to EDC. So while, you know, wearing something like these Fiel Raven Vita Pros, you know, this Manticore X really isn't a problem. Works just fine. You know, I it blends in with my pants. I don't really have an issue with it, but there are knives that are slightly better for EDC. So let's talk about some pocket-friendly options. First off, I think one that um, is one of the more compelling options is the TRM Atom, especially if you get it with something like uh, G10 handles or a synthetic like Micarta, because you really save yourself quite a bit of weight in you know choosing a um, synthetic material like those as opposed to titanium. Not to say that the titanium is bad, but honestly, like as far as rigidity goes, these guys do have inset metal liners, so you know like this is not going to flex that much. So honestly, your rigidity when you're carrying it is pretty good. But what a lot of people are kind of blown away by with the atoms, very similar to the Neutron, is just how freaking thin these things are. I mean, they are super thin blades, but yet something like the Atom still has enough size for even someone with large hands to get a very comfortable grip. So I think the Atom is one of the most compelling um, pocket-friendly blades out there that I've come across, because if you're looking for something that's thin, reasonably lightweight and um, still like very large, kind of like what the uh, design um, ethos for the Benchmade bug out is supposed to be. Like the Atom takes that to the next level. Um, the Neutron is also a valiant option. We won't talk about it in this video because the Neutron's really just the smaller brother to the Atom, um, both I guess metaphorically and literally, or maybe in physics too or in chemistry, I should say, uh, too. So anyways, <laughs> let's jump into the next one. So the next one up is going to be the Benchmade 940 Osborne. And the 940 Osborne's a little bit heavier, especially with its aluminum scales. But for me, I think a well-broken in 940 is just so freaking hard to beat. And I will say like, you can definitely understand why these knives are perennial bestsellers. They've been, you know, one of Benchmade's arguably best sold knives ever. And uh, it's really just because they're thin, they're super, super like narrow, they're reasonably lightweight. Like I said, it is aluminum handles. So you do have to contend with a little bit of extra weight from the metal. But as far as it goes, it's just a really hard knife to go wrong with. And I think, you know, it's extra weight is really made up for in having that super narrow, almost pencil-like blade shape. So I can see why a lot of people love these. And like I said, once you have one truly broken in, like it just flips shut, so easy to open and close. And the action is actually really good. And I do have to say for, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, um, dis just normal washers, like phosphorus bronze washers and stuff, but well broken in knives that run on washers can be equally as smooth as knives on bearings. And the nice thing is washers are a lot more simplistic. There's a lot less moving parts to a washer as opposed to a bearing. So definitely worth noting. All right, speaking of the bug out, the bug out, like I said, is undoubtedly on this list because it just really is a very pocket friendly knife. It was designed from the ground up to be that way. It is very thin, very lightweight. It is the lightest of all the knives on this list. And once again, for good reason, it is a really freaking solid option for uh, being super pocket friendly. Now, the Bug Out is not my personal favorite knife, but once again, you know, I have to give credit where credit's due, and uh, Benchmade did a really good job at slimming everything down, even if it's not necessarily my favorite knife. It has seen quite a bit of carry time with me, specifically when I need a knife that is just ultra low profile and ultra light. Now, a knife that is very similar in vain, and if we're gonna talk about the Bug Out, we have to talk about this guy too. This is the Hogue Decca. The Hogue Decca really is a direct competitor, and arguably, I would say, better better than the Benchmade bug out. However, technically the bug out is still just a little bit lighter, if I remember correctly, than the Deca. And um, some people will prefer the 
the bug out over the DECA, primarily due to its tip shape. Now you can get a drop point version of the Hogue DECA, but invariably the DECA does have a smaller or more narrow blade profile regardless to which blade shape you go with. So you may not like it for that reason. You also might not like the ergonomics. I will say to the bug out's credit, and I like I get that Hogue can't can only do so much without directly copying Benchmade, but you know the ergonomics on the DECA is something that you're either gonna like or not. Whereas with the bug out, it's far more um like there's no finger grooves, there's no finger, you know, like kind of um ultimately I guess just grooves in it. So it's far more um comfy for a wider variety of people's hands and hand shapes to fit and accommodate. Now for me personally, the DECA feels just fine. I don't have any issues with it. And if I was like given the choice on any given day, I guess I own both, so it doesn't really matter, but I would definitely take the DECA over the bug out, especially if I was like asked to buy them both again, uh, I would definitely take the DECA. All right, last one up on the list is going to be a still very pocket friendly blade. And that is the American Blade Works or ABW Model 1. Now, whether you choose this with the Warren cliff as I personally have here and I personally really love this Warncliffe. Um, whether you choose it with the Warncliffe or not it's totally up to you. They also make these in more conventional like drop point um, blade shapes but this guy is super pocket friendly because once again you see a lot of similarities in inset liners. Now this one does tend to run a little bit thicker or a little bit on the thicker side but honestly I threw this one in here because uh, you know some people they don't love super thin super lightweight knives so this one I think is a really good balance between still once again being very lightweight and or being reasonably lightweight and also um, being just a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger. So it gives you a little bit more to hang on to if you are one of those people that has meatier hands. As you can definitely tell, my hands are very narrow, very thin. So for me, I can make something like a DECA or a bug out work just fine with my own personal you know, stature and my own personal like hands. But some people definitely prefer a little bit more or a little bit extra. And I think the ABW is a really good compromise or their Model 1 is a very good compromise in that regard. I think it um, definitely definitely does a good job at being just a little bit more hand filling without being like too over the board um, or too over the top. So anyways, that is the final one. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video about knives that want to live in your pocket. As always, guys, God bless and I'm out.